Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Quinton here and welcome to tutorial number seven. And in this tutorial, we are gonna be taking a look at designing the footer for our website. So uh, if I jump over to Asana over here, you can see I've ticked off the designing a header task and uh, the next ta task here is to design the footer. So let's um, take a look at a few examples of what a footer should actually look like because we've got a bunch of different options here. We could go for just a completely simple looking footer, or we could go for a slightly more complicated footer. And it really depends on uh, how much information you have available uh, to you on your site and how much information you'd like to uh, share to the user. Right, so if we take a look at uh, UIKit's website, this is an example of a very simple looking footer uh, where we just have a logo at the bottom and uh, some made by information or some uh, copyrights, right? Uh, if you have a slightly more complicated website like an online shop as, uh, uh, like Apple, uh, then you can see that you've got some um, product information. They've also got some store information, account information. So this is all kind of stuff that you could also put in your footer. So you could put in a bunch of different columns with menus. Um, and uh, yeah, that would be awesome if you have a lot of content. But if you don't have a lot of content, um, yeah, it can sometimes be quite tricky to think of things to put here. Uh, so uh, I think for my example, I'm just gonna keep everything really, really simple and use a copyright um, information or a copyright uh, um, paragraph. And then something else I'd like to do, which I see is done on a lot of Google's websites. So this is the Google AdSense site is they add in social media links in the footer. Uh, so I think that's what I'm gonna be doing on uh, my, my website as well is some social media links to the left-hand side and then some copyright information to the right-hand side. So now that I know more or less what I'd like to do here, I think let's jump over to Photoshop. And uh, before I actually get into designing anything, I need to tidy up my Photoshop file a little bit because right now, um, yeah, uh, even though I have my Mac in one artboard and my iPhone on another artboard, uh, all of these other layers here are just kind of there. And that can be quite confusing when I start adding a lot more layers. So I think what I'd like to do here is create a layer group and just drag that into the correct artboard and then take everything that is on my iPhone layer right now and plunk it into that layer group and call that layer group header. And then for my Mac, do the same thing, create a layer group here, call that one header as well, and just plonk everything into that layer group. So now I can close these layer groups and uh, yeah, everything looks a lot more tidy and I know that I can hide and show my entire header or uh, yeah, if I'd like to, I can grab my move tool with that layer group selected and move the entire layer, right? Uh, which is gonna come in handy while I design my footer because now uh, I can design my footer, hide it away, and then at the end of my project, show it again and put it exactly where I want it to be, right? So let's create a layer group here called footer. And I'm gonna start the design on my Mac and then we'll move that over to iPhone in just a second. Uh, so what I'd like to do here is uh, create a rectangle. So grab my rectangle tool, click here, uh, choose my sizing. So I think 1440 by 80 pixels work, works quite well. Um, and then hit OK. All right. And now I've got this properties box here. So if I wanted to change something about my block size, I could simply just do that. But I think for now, 80 pixels is going to be good. So let's move this into place. And I think I'd like to change the color because uh, this gray is not exactly part of my theme colors. But if I go over to uh, UIKit's website, I'd like to explain uh, some colors to you because UIKit has a customizer, right? So we can customize whatever color we would like into our website. But UIKit also has these things called blocks, um, which I guess is maybe the best example I can give to you guys right now. Um, and there are these block classes. So there is a default class, a muted class, a primary class, and a secondary class. Now default, I think is going to be white. 
muted is going to be a kind of gray color like this one. Uh, primary color is your blue color, but you can choose whatever color you'd like for this. So if you wanted a red or an orange or a different color shade of blue, you could always choose that in the customizer, right? And then the same thing for uh, the secondary color. You could always choose your secondary color as well if you'd like it to be something else, but the default secondary color in UIKit is uh, this black, or it's not actually black, it's uh, a slightly lighter black than black. Um, and I think I'm gonna just inspect that element and grab that color. So you can see here it's hash 222. Right, so I think that's the, uh, that's the color I'd like to use for my footer as well. So let's jump back over to Photoshop and change the color here to um, that darker color there, which is, it should be hash 222. I think I can just double click on my layer and put that information in here as well, All right? Uh, so now I have the footer uh, rectangle set up. Now let's uh, add in some text. So I'm just gonna tick uh, or click anywhere on my document and then um, let's type follow us. And I know right now it's really difficult to see, so let's put that over the black background. Um, so follow us, and I can see right now that we're not using the correct font, so let's change that font to Roboto Thin. 14 pixels uh, in size should do. Um, and then add in a semicolon. And uh, I'd like to add in social media links here as well. So I think what I'm gonna do is jump over to oops, uh, to uh, <laughs> uh, Google Chrome and look for, uh, where is it, Font Awesome's website and grab the information I need here. So let's grab a uh, Twitter icon, copy that and paste that in on Photoshop. And you can see, again, I've got this funny block, so Let's change that to font awesome, All right? And I think I'm gonna grab a few more social media links. Okay, so I've added in my social media links. I think the next thing I can do is just go over to the other side of my footer here and uh, put in my copyright information, right? So let's grab another text block, drag that out and type in um, copyright. 2017, I'll move that over here so we can actually see it, All right? Uh, and if you guys wanna get a copyright symbol, you can always grab one from uh, Font Awesome's website again. So uh, let's see here, copyright. So you could use the Font Awesome copyright symbol or um, yeah, you could do what I'm gonna do here and just hold down uh, Alt and G on my Mac keyboard and that actually creates a little copyright symbol for you. So if you guys didn't know that, now you know. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, what I was thinking about doing was calling this uh, company for this website uh, Link, but it's actually a travel website. So uh, Link Travel uh, and I think that looks good, so let's just get the sizing right, and then I think to uh, get the alignment right, let's drag this over here, place these two together so that they're in line, hold down shift, and then just drag that across to where it needs to be, right? And now I have my footer pretty much set up for my desktop. Uh, now I think what I'd like to do is do the exact same thing for my mobile phone. Um, so I'm just gonna keep things simple and yeah, once uh, this gets to a mobile phone height, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, take the copyright symbol, put that underneath, take the social media links, put those on top, and obviously my footer will probably get a little bit bigger. So if I jump over to my iPhone layer here, um, create an artboard for the footer, uh, I just need to create a rectangle, the correct size here, and I think 375 by 160 will work uh, quite well. 
uh, if you're unsure of how I got to that 160, basically this one is 80 pixels. So uh, because I want to stack these two on top of each other, I'm just basically doubling the height here for my mobile phone um, and changing that from uh, being 80 pixels to 160 pixels. Now I just need to change the color here. So let's go hash 222, zoom in. Uh, and actually what I think I can do here to save myself some time is just duplicate those layers by hitting Command J, pulling those up to my uh, phone artboard, make sure that they're in the right place here. Um, yeah, so they're kind of on the phone artboard. Um, oops, that's not right, yeah. Where is it? That's the one. There we go. And now I can uh, drag these down to where they need to be. So that one there, and I think the follow us link uh, over there. Just try and get the spacing set up here. So. Yeah, something like that will do. If I hide my guides, uh, that's pretty much our desktop setup so far and our iPhone setup so far. And I think what I can do now is, uh, yeah, just hide my footer layers and I'll put them back in when I am done with my design. And that is all I have for you guys in this video. But before I end the video off, I just want to say that if you like the videos I create and you want to help me make more videos, then consider becoming a patron. So kind of like these guys right here, these guys are my patrons who pledge $5 or more every single month. And that really goes a long way to helping me make more videos for you guys more often. And uh, yeah. Now that uh, you know that you can help me, uh, I'd like to uh, say don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like and share this video because that's really going to help my channel grow and I'll see you guys in the next one.